from Hollywood, the Hollywood Radio Theater. Starring Esther Williams and Mary Sullivan in Skirts Ahoy. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure you're all aware of the excellent job the waves do in their official capacity in the United States Navy. So in tonight's play, Skirts Ahoy, we're going to take their serious side for granted and get on to the more romantic, amusing episodes in their lives. And starring in this frothy metro goldwyn mayer screen hit, we present one of the most talented of today's stars, Esther Williams, co-starring with handsome Barry Sullivan in their original roles. Now, Skirts Ahoy, starring Esther Williams as Whitney Young and Barry Sullivan as Paul. I'm a doctor, a physician. I became a doctor because in the innocence of my distant youth, I dreamed dreams. And what happened? I joined the Navy. Now, I've got nothing against the Navy. I think it's great. It's a man's world and a good life, shared with weather-beaten, grizzled old sea dogs, that brave and brawny band who go down to the sea in ships. That's right. You guessed it. I got transferred. Sent to a place called the Great Lakes Naval Training Center. Most of it is devoted to the training of men, but some of it is for females, for this is the home of the waves, the lady sailors. Oh, Paul, am I glad to see you. Good evening, Dr. Johnson. Oh, I've been looking for you all day. You want ethical quack? I ought to have you hauled up before the medical oh, association. Now, now, look, Paul, don't be bitter. I've been here for six months. I had to have a replacement. Yes, but it didn't have to be me. Look, I didn't ask for you by name. Why, I wouldn't do that to my worst enemy. Oh, uh, it's that bad, huh, Willie? Oh, yeah, it's that bad. Not at first, but later. Oh. When you start calling a stomach a tummy... And you realize you're getting to know what sort of powder base is good for dry skin. That's when it gets scary. Well, um, uh, how do you get away from them? You don't. You can't. Well, there's the office down the hall. It's all ready for you. Good luck, poor old Paul. And now, just a minute. This happens to be Friday. That's right. And we got a brand new batch today, close to 200 lady recruits. Well, that's just lovely, pal. But my orders say that I don't have to report for duty until 0800 on Monday. Yeah, but as so long as you're until you... Monday at 0800, the ladies are still all yours. Oh, now, look, Paul. I'm going to unload my things, then run into town for a little unfeminine fresh air. I intend to breathe it for the entire weekend. Rats. So don't check out until you're sure that I've checked in. You're not replaced yet. See you Monday, Willie. As I left the building, I caught a glimpse of one of the new recruits. She was hurrying into the office of the CPO. May I come in? I'm Whitney Young. Hello. You are exactly six hours late. <laughs> I know, isn't it ridiculous? But I do have an explanation. You see, I... Don't bother. I'm just a chief petty officer. When you're six hours late, you get to explain everything to a lieutenant commander. Pick up your bag and follow me. Hmm? Oh. At ease, Miss Giff. At ease. Thank you. Commander, this is seaman recruit Whitney Young. Six hours late. How do you do? I, I wired from LaGuardia when my flight was canceled, but apparently you Ms. didn't get... Miss Young. Hmm? It is not customary to sit down until I've indicated it, if I do. Oh. On the other hand, you seem to be a pretty special case. I've had three telephone calls about you already. Oh. Oh, he's called already, huh? Who? Arthur. Arthur Dunlap. Who is Arthur Dunlap? Not that it matters. Well, you see, he's the man I was supposed to marry, but I didn't. No, sir. I joined the wave. Miss Young, you do not call me, sir. Sorry. The three telephone calls were not from Mr. Dunlap. Two were from admirals and one from the Navy Department. But I don't know anybody in the Navy. They know you. Oh, oh of course it's my Uncle Thatcher. He knows all sorts of muck and mucks. Oh, I hope he didn't bother you, too. Oh, no. He just pointed out that you are a fine girl with a fine background and used to all sorts of fine things. You should be handled gently. I'll kill him. Sit down. Thank you. Most girls of your type apply for commissions. Mm, just what is my type? The coat is mink, I assume. It's mink, but I don't want a commission. Why exactly 
did you join the way? Well, I, I wanted to feel useful. I never have. There are some people who believe that officers can be useful. I just didn't want it made easy. I guarantee you've come to the right place. Well, anyway, I'm glad to have you here. I think. Come along. I'll show you to the barracks. Thank you. Just a minute. Yes? Yeah? It's customary to allow one superior officer to precede one. Oh, sorry. You'll learn. Hiya, honey. Uh, take the top bunk in the first locker. Me? I'm Seaman Recruit Yancey. I'm Whitney Young. Uh, that's our roomie. She's Mary Kate Yarborough. Real quiet. Hi, Mary Kate. Hello. Hey, get a load of that coat. Ah, oh, it'd be nice to have a little class in the class. Hey, what are you doing here? Getting away from it all? Well, in a manner of speaking. And you? It all got away from me. <laughs> so, I'm looking for it. What's its name? Archie O'Connovan, United States Navy. <laughs> uh, is something wrong with Mary Kate? I don't know. She just don't talk. What's the matter, baby? You homesick? <gasps> <laughs> oh, now what did you say that for? Now she's bawling again. Well, when you've got a lump in your throat, it's the only way to drown her. <laughs> Haven't you ever been homesick? You should see my home. <laughs> hey, you now, Mary Kate, look, honey. Why don't you now? Just... Now wait, I, I've I've got a better idea. Let's just mind our own business and leave her alone. Okay. Good night, sailor. <laughs> Good night, sailor. <laughs> And so the ladies entered upon their new lives in the Navy. They got uniforms and haircuts and their manuals of regulations. And a few brave souls undertook the job of teaching them how to march and drill and mop a floor. Later, the lady officers and staff members voted, as is customary, for company recruit commander. And Seaman Whitney Young was elected. At night, the ladies had a party in their barracks. Oh, it must have been heaps of fun. All I know is it kept me awake for hours. Hey, hey, Mary Kate, wait, please. What's the matter? Didn't you have any fun tonight? Oh, I enjoyed it, Whit, but I, I just don't belong here. Whit, I want to go home. But what would you do if you went home? You, you mean Dick? Well, yes, now, now that you've brought up his name. Dick jilted me. That, that's why I joined the waves, to get away oh, from... Oh, I know just how you feel. The same thing happened to me. Oh, no, no. Yours was entirely different. You jilted him. Well, the fact remains I wanted to leave town, too. But suppose you did go home. What would you do? Well, I, I can keep house for my mother and help my father with his books and my kid brother with his schoolwork. Doesn't and... sound like much of a life now, does it? Well, I'm not much of a person... Oh, Mary Kate, I want to help you, well, but. Well, then I... help me get out. I I'm just not sure it's the best thing for you. Hey, Whit, you're on security watch in the lobby of the administration building. Oh, I've got five minutes yet. <laughs> Nancy. Hmm? Mary Kate wants to get out of the Navy. Well, sure. She's more the homegirl type. What are you going to do about it? I don't know, but we're going to help her. Well, as far as I know, there's only one way to get out if you're going to have a baby. Uh, we'll have to think of something else. That's no good. That's no good. <laughs> Well, there must be something else. I'll find someone who knows the ropes. Meanwhile, you and Mary Kate... Who goes there? Who goes there? The plumber goes there. Oh. Listen, they throw everything down my pipes. Everything. But lollipops is too much. Now, you put through an order, see? And you tell them, lollipops are plumbers, but not both. Mad at me for? I didn't do it. Well, since the place opened, that's all I hear. I didn't do it. Well, somebody did it, and somebody better stop it. Who goes there? Hey, Pop, have you really been here since the place opened? Otherwise, would it look like this? <laughs> well, you must know just about everything there is to know about it. Plumbers know everything there is to know about anything. But then tell me, if a wave recruit wanted to get out, how would she go about doing it? Well, ma'am, there's one sure way. Yeah, besides that one. Oh. Well, being too stupid. No, no. Well, then, being homesick. Homesick? Yeah, when you can't eat, can't sleep, cry it all the time, they figure out it's some sort of a disease. Psychology. 
Pop, I adore you. <laughs> you got any problems? You just come to me. Good night, Pop. Thanks, I will. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Nothing, absolutely nothing, compares with the workings of a female brain. First, they're not satisfied to let the men run the Navy. And then, after they get in, they've got to find a way to get out. And seaman recruit Young found it. Not for herself, mind you, but for a little friend, Mary Kate. Mary Kate, hey, hey, come on, wake up, wake up! Oh, go away. Hey, Yancey, you two, hmm? look. Look, I've just seen Miss Stoughton. She's coming over oh. here. Oh, Lieutenant Commander Stoughton? Yes, yes, we've got to get Mary Kate up. Oh, oh just let me sleep for about six years. Well, what happened? What's the matter? Well, I told Stoughton she's homesick. They let you out if you're homesick. Hey, you kidding? No. Now help me. Get her out of bed. Okay, come on, honey. Come on. Up you go, Carl. Right, I marched hurry. five miles today. I cleaned the washroom. Now, now let's see. She's got to be pacing the floor. Yeah. Crying is possible. <laughs> you won't even let me go to sleep. Oh, that's it, baby. Yeah. That's fine. Keep it up. That's fine. <laughs> I thought you were my friend. Why don't you just let Shh, me there go she is. to Stop me, Mary Kate. Is that you, dear? Oh, it's just awful, ma'am. Oh, now, tell me. What's the trouble? I can't sleep. I just can't sleep. But why not? Because they won't. I just can't sleep, that's all. Oh, you poor child. Oh, it's terrible, ma'am. She just never sleeps. Come here, Mary Kate. Now, you just get back in your bunk, dear. There, now. I'm sure you'll go to sleep if you try. Just close your eyes and don't think of anything. Uh, I'll try, ma'am. Yancey. Uh, y- yes, ma'am. Look after her. Talk to her. Keep her company. Be a good shipman. Oh, yes, ma'am. Don't you worry, Mary Kate. Everything's going to be all right. Yancey's going to look after you, aren't you, Yancey? Oh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, gee, that was good work, honey. Good night. And you know what Stoughton told me? She's going to send Mary Kate before the aptitude board. Oh, no, wait a minute. No, that's you... how you get out. They're the ones who send you home. Oh. You hear that, Mary Kate? They're going to bounce you. <gasps> oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Now, remember, Mary Kate, there's nothing to be nervous about. We'll be right there to back you up. Yeah, that's right, honey. What if the aptitude board says no? Why should they? They're supposed to deal with homesickness, and you're homesick. Hey, Mary Kate, you got a visitor in the lounge. But I can't have. Okay, but he's waiting anyway. He? Oh, it must be Daddy. Well. Who? Oh, no. No, it must be Dick. And I won't see him. I won't. Is that her fella, Dick the Jilder? Well, she just, she just got to see him. Oh, look, you dope. Maybe he's changed his mind. I don't care. I won't. I can't. Besides the aptitude... You've loads of time. Now, listen, Mary Kate. Last night, you were pretty honest with yourself. You said the one thing in your life was Dick. Well, here he is. Do something about it. Yeah. Like... Like crawl. <laughs> Go on now. Go get him. Go on. Mary Kate... You wanted to see me? Oh, Mary Kate, I... Oh, can't we sit down? No. Oh, can't you ever forgive me? I, I don't blame you. I, I guess I got scared. You can understand that, can't you? Can I? I mean, what if we just think we're in love because we've never known anyone else? I thought maybe we might be missing something. We never even used to fight. It was... Well, it was as if we weren't separate people. See? Anyway, I-, I thought there should be more than that. Well, you've explained why you got scared. Fine. Goodbye. Well, we just can't leave it like this. Why not? Well, how did I know you were going to go and do a thing like this? Like what? Oh, like trying to be a sailor because of me. You know you can't be a sailor. You've got to be independent and tough and... Well, I'm surprised you've lasted this long. Yes, very funny, isn't it? It's crazy. Now, come on, honey. Just take me to whoever's in charge of this place, and I'll get you out of it. You don't think I ought to do the explaining myself? Oh, Mary Kate, you know you. You'd just start to cry. Oh, no, I wouldn't. It'd take an awful lot to make me cry right now. Oh, what are you talking about? I'm talking about me. I don't want anybody to do me a favor and marry me because I'm helpless and spineless and a dope. I never said you were a dope. Well, I was. 
Only I'm not going to be anymore. I'm going to do just what you wanted to do. I'm going to look around and live a little. Then the next time I see you, only there's not going to be any next time, I'll bet you don't look so good to me. As a matter of fact, you don't look so good to me right now. You look dull. Very, very dull. Mary Kate! <laughs> Don't stop, Seaman Young. Just tell the aptitude board what else you've observed about Mary Kate Yarborough. Well, it isn't that she hasn't tried. She really has. Why, she's tackled Excuse every... Me. Come in, Yarborough. Come in. Thank you. I will. Continue. Well, uh, as I was saying, she's been eating badly and sleeping badly, and, well, it just seems she can't cope now, with Whitney, this Now, Whitney, that's of... just nonsense. What? Would you like to speak for yourself, Yarborough? I certainly would. Oh, I know that Whitney means well, but... If she thinks I can't cope with things, well, she's all wrong. Give me something to cope with, that's all. You'll see the best job of coping with you ever saw. I thought you were miserable here. Well, of course I was miserable. I was also a dope, ma'am. And that's why I've got to stay here, to learn not to be one. So if you want me to leave the waves, well, you'll just have to kick me out. Well, I never heard of a thing like Case that. dismissed. <laughs> Well, it was shortly after that that the three lady sailors got their first leave. Naturally, they went to Chicago to properly observe the occasion. Manhunting. Well, they decided to separate, but they'd meet late in the afternoon at Yolanda's tea room. That is, if they were not more interestingly occupied. Ah, uh, how do you like this? Three sailors on leave, and what happens? Nothing. Well, I've never been so happy to see anyone in my life. Oh, I'm so glad I couldn't find anything else to do. Yeah, me too. Thrilled to pieces. Uh, I had a lot of good intentions, but I just didn't know how to begin. Me, it was different. They didn't know how to begin. <laughs> oh, what did we have to come to Chicago for? I love me, she's asking. Me who hasn't talked to a civilian-type man in six weeks. Oh, it's lovely running into old friends like this, isn't it? So nice. Look, ladies, let's face it. We're all we got. Wine, men, and song, we said. And what do we get? Tea leaves. Well, the trouble. <laughs> the whole trouble is that men can go anywhere. They can do anything they want. Yeah. Well, sailors can do anything. What? Well, yes. Wait a minute. Huh? We're just in the wrong place, that's all. What we need is a nice cocktail bar. The kind where women are admitted, but uh, grudgingly. Hey, yeah, the, the mahogany room at the Blakely, huh? Well, what are we waiting for? Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. You two go ahead, uh... I'll join you later. No, no. No, no. We don't go without you. No. I'd rather not. Honestly. Well, if you're sure. Okay, honey. You you meet us at the bus station, though, huh? I will. Have fun. <laughs> See you later, Mary Kay. Well, that's how it happened. My first actual meeting with our proud Navy's two recruits, Yancey and Whitney Young. Coincidentally, I, too, was enjoying a leave. But being a privileged character, I was in civvies, no uniform. Now, isn't this nice, Yancey? Yeah. Let's sit at the bar. Uh, okay. Bartender, do you have a match? Oh, oh, allow me. Never mind, bartender. My lighter. May I help you? Now, isn't this nice? Thank you. Oh, I like the way he did that. Smooth. Shows he has tact. You know, a guy like this, he shouldn't be alone. No, he doesn't have to be alone. He, uh, you been stood up, honey? Or are you just all by yourself? Just all by myself. Like us, huh? Gee, ain't that nice. <laughs> uh, you, you don't mind our being so direct? Uh, not at all. See, Yancy? Mm -hmm. Not at all. It isn't that we like rushing things, but you see, we only have four hours before we leave for the base, and that's not very much time. The base? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that, uh, the big place, Great Lakes? That's right. And only four hours. Oh, that is depressing. Well, it's depressing, but it's not final. There's always an angle if you can think of a good enough reason. And there's a good enough reason. <laughs> I uh, suppose you have all sorts of ways of getting around things. Oh, nothing. Just requires a little talent. Uh, suppose you did want some more time tonight for some reason or other. Uh, what would you do? Well, I'd just telephone the base doctor, of course. Oh, yeah, sure. He's a swell guy. I heard he's a creep. <laughs> anyway, all I'd say is, Doc. I feel faint, I'd say. Relax, he'd say. Put your feet up and stay right where you are. 
Get it? Transparent. Mm -hmm. The creeps, a sucker for a sob story. <laughs> exactly. Well, of course, knowing the angles helps and all the gold bricking helps. But it is a little restricting, if you know what I mean. Oh? Well, yeah, for example, now in our barracks, it's restricted to women. Nothing but dames. Well, I, I can't say you strike me exactly as a woman's woman. You're your friend either. I never struck myself that way either. You know what's funny? But why is it there are lots of men's men, but hardly any women's women? And if there was, it, would it be a good thing or not? Uh, Yancey. Huh? Could I see you for just a moment, please? Oh, sure. Yeah, I'll be right back, sir. Now, don't go away. Now, wait. All by yourself? What happened to your buddy? Well, she had a very important appointment. I had to remind her about it. Uh, how did you decide which one? Draw straws? I wish it'd been that easy. You cost me plenty. Two sessions of the bucket brigade. Well, I'm terribly flattered, but why? Why? Hmm. Well, uh... Look, why beat around the bush? You're alone and I'm alone and we have to have dinner, so why not together? Hmm. I don't want to force my attentions on you. Oh, no, no, not at all. <laughs> it's just that I like getting things straight. For example, when I ask people to dinner, I take them. Well, naturally, so do I. Well, all right, I accept. Well, good. <laughs> good for you. Uh, uh, by the way, what's your name? Uh, Smith. Mary Smith. <laughs> Isn't that funny? My name's Smith, too. <laughs> John Smith. Oh, really? Uh, there's just one more thing I'd like to get straight. Well? I, I certainly hope you don't think I do this sort of thing all the time. I'm just not that kind of a man. Let's go, Miss Smith. When a sailor by the name of Patty Mosier was in Pusan, Korea, he saw a little boy collapse on a road because of malnutrition. He found many youngsters and old people dying for lack of nourishment. Having been brought up on a Virginia farm, Patty observed that the Korean soil looked good. Why no vegetables? The answer he found was lack of seeds. So he did something about it. He drew all his cash from the bank, $1,500, bought seeds and distributed them with the aid of religious missions in the area. Soon his crusade began to spread, and he was helped by contributions from people in the United States who heard about his project. There's no doubt that hundreds of hungry people owe their very lives to this sailor with a heart. Such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. Now our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act two of Skirts Ahoy, starring Esther Williams as Whitney Young and Barry Sullivan as Paul. I must admit that Mary Smith provided a very excellent dinner for me. She even thought of brandy with the coffee. All in all, things were starting to get quite interesting. Splendid appetite, Mr. Smith. It's been a pleasure just watching you eat. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, and you know what I like about you? Mm. You don't take advantage of the situation. So many women buy a man dinner and a couple of drinks and expect him to fall dead at their feet. But you, sailor, you're different. Mm. Uh, you uh, mean it's, it's happened to you before? Well, I'm not a child. Hi, you handsome. <laughs> Dark green, brother, dark green. Oh. Ditch the Navy, Jack. Let the Army take over. Come over honey. Listen to them. Isn't it awful? <laughs> They're wax, eh? Oh, uh, just youthful high spirits, I suppose. Maybe if I turn my back. That's good. Let's just ignore them. Well, what's the next item on the program? What? What's the next move, you know? Uh... Oh, Oh, I don't think there is any. I, I have to go back to the base, remember? Oh, but you can get out of that easily enough. The doctor, all you have to do is call him up and... Uh, uh... Well, uh, I know what I said, but... <laughs> well, look, this, is, this has been very pleasant, if costly. And I've enjoyed it thoroughly, but hey, now I... Hey, handsome, how about it? Why don't you join us? Mm -hmm. Come on over. Come on, <laughs> Dear me, those young ladies are rather forward, aren't they? <laughs> That kindergarten's beginning to lose its charm for me. Hey, look, why, why don't we go somewhere else, somewhere quiet and cozy? Oh, now, you don't have to if you don't want to, but after all, you are a sailor, aren't you? Well, yes, but I... Of course, if you're nervous... Who's nervous? Uh, a waiter, 
Please, uh, here. Uh, and never mind the change. Why, thank you, Commodore. <laughs> and this is for you, sir. A note from the young lady. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, shall we go? Uh, what about the note? What does the children's corner have to say? Well, now, let me see. Dear Brown Eyes, why don't you come over to the army? <laughs> uh, they don't mean anything by it, really. Uh, I'm sure they don't. Do you mind if I deliver your answer? Do you think it's really necessary? No, no, but it may be very satisfying. You wait right here, Mr. Smith. I'll be back. It was a very interesting brawl while it lasted. <laughs> it ended abruptly with the fortunate arrival of several military policemen. On the following day, in answer to a complaint filed by the Army, seaman and recruit Whitney Young was hauled up before a board of inquiry. And you still have nothing to say to the charges? No, sir. Since this disturbance has resulted in considerable newspaper publicity, all liberty during the period of seaman recruit Young's boot training is canceled. Furthermore, she... Uh, who's that at the door? Dr. Elcott requests permission to testify, sir. Uh, you know something about this unpleasantness? Yes, sir, I do. Oh, no. What's that? Uh, nothing, sir. Sorry, sir. Uh, sir, yesterday afternoon, while on leave and in civilian dress, I was having a coffee at the Blakely Hotel when I found myself without matches. Seaman Recruit Young very kindly supply supplied me with a light. Realizing she was from the base, I engaged her in conversation. Oh? Why? Oh, you see, sir, I... I like, uh, I like to familiarize myself with the routine of a new station. And, and therefore, I found the conversation very instructive. So much so that I told Seaman Young I would regard it as a favor if we could continue it through dinner. Well? Uh, I regret to say we were continuously annoyed by the behavior of three whack personnel at a nearby table. They repeatedly made sounds and remarks, sir, which I can only describe as uh, unseemly. If you'd illustrate, please. Yes, sir. <whistles> <laughs> uh, shall I continue, sir? Uh, by all means. <laughs> well, sir, I personally was embarrassed. Had they been men, I would have spoken to them. But since they were women, sir, Seaman Young thought that she should do so. Oh, not in a spirit of anger, sir, but courteously to request that they behave in a more creditable fashion. And then? Well... When the disturbance reached sizable proportions, sir, I left. First, because the MPs had arrived, and I didn't think the MPs would be, shall I say, sympathetic to my explanation. And second? Because I felt that an objective witness to the incident should be available, sir, just in case. Very wise, Doctor. Oh, very wise. Thank you, sir. Seaman Recruit Young? Yes, sir. You may consider the charges dropped. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Very grateful, Doctor. I've been rescued before in my day, but never in such style. Now, just one minute. Just a minute yourself, Mr. Smith, indeed. And you, an officer here, why, of all the... You're sitting on my desk. Well, yes, I know. Get and... off that desk. Stand at attention when you're talking to an officer and call me sir. You're joking, of course. I am not joking. I'm sorry, sir. Young, when I sent for you... Oh, no. No, I came here on my own, sir. When I sent for you, Young... I was going to talk to you about last night. I was going to tell you that while I understood it was just an impulse and a lot of fun, that I hoped you wouldn't do it again, just as I knew you hadn't done it before. Nothing at the end of the speech, like, uh, what are you doing next Saturday night? I'm not planning to end that particular speech, since I've decided this incident was neither impulsive nor untypical, but the sort of thing you probably do all the time. So I've got a new speech, an official one. Yes, sir. Young, you nearly involved the Navy in a very stupid situation. Some people are still prejudiced about women in the service, and all it takes is one junior league type wave now, like you two. So you keep out of trouble, or I'll do my official and personal best to see that you get booted out. May I ask a question, sir? Of course. I'm not saying you're wrong about last night. You're very probably right. But, well, right or wrong, don't you think you're being a little bit stuffy? No, but I know that you do. Because you're the kind of a girl who can't be sent for who'd never give a man a chance to ask her anything, Saturday night or anything. Mm. Mm, I guess I always do tell him at that, don't I? Well, 
Thank you for the rescue, sir. For the waves, not for me. The waves are quite welcome. Good afternoon, sir. Well, I wasn't very proud of myself that afternoon. On the other hand, I wasn't particularly ashamed either. I don't suppose I knew just how I did feel about Whitney Young and our little encounter. Anyway, as she'd mentioned, the waves had a dance on Saturday night. The USO, there at the base. All right, Yancy, come on, start talking. Now, what's this Mary Kate's been telling me? You asking to be shipped to France? Oh, sure. La Plume de Matanti. Wherever my men is, that's where I'm going. Uh, hey, Buster! Hey, pardon vous, Francais? Drop dead. Huh? <laughs> Guess you don't. Oh, Yancy, you know there's about one chance in a million they'll say yes to a request like that. So, what's wrong with those odds? But all you got was one postcard from Archie, and all he said was that he thought he was going to France. Listen, my Archie don't think for nothing. He... Hey! Hey, do you speak French? Oh, way, 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 way. Wow! Let's sail, honey. I'll see you, Whitney. See you. <laughs> oh, gee, she has a lot of fun. Oh, hi, Mary. Well, what are you sounding so pathetic about with Dick phoning every ten minutes? You gonna see him? Oh, Maybe. After he sweated it out for a while, I may throw him a bone. Oh. And then again, maybe I'll... I'll, I'll... What, what's the matter with you? Look. Look who's here. Dick. But what's he doing here? Mary Kate. That sailor suit. Where did you get that sailor suit? I'm in the Navy. They gave it to me. You can't be. Well, as long as you're in... I have nothing else to do. You had plenty of other things to do when you left me at the altar. Well, that was before I was in love with you. And how do you know you're in love with me now? Maybe you're just fond of me because we have so much in common. Oh, honey, please, don't start that. I'm in love with you, and it's none of your business how I know either. Well, as long as you're here, I suppose we might as well dance. You see, I knew you loved me. Good evening, Nancy. Oh, uh, C Commander Stoughton, ma'am. Yeah, good evening. You know Dr. Elcott? Uh, I have a vague feeling we've met. Yeah, oh, no, <laughs> no, we haven't, sir. Uh, how do you do? Um, Miss Stoughton, a uh, UFO shindig like this, well, it's sort of a free-for-all, ain't it? I mean, you can just ask anybody. Of course. Well, can I have this one with him? You don't have to go through channels, Yancy. Just ask him. Well, how about it, Doctor? I got lots of fascinating symptoms. <laughs> Yes, I can tell just by looking at you. Well, just, just two turns around the floor, you know, so nobody will think I'm a wallflower, and then you can drop me. No, but I don't want to. Yeah, well, what do you know? Well, look, Whitney Young all by herself over there. It is? Yeah. Right. Oh, yes, yes, it is. You don't want to dance with her? Not particularly. Well, no offense to the uniform, Doc, but it isn't every day you get to meet a guy who looks so bright and ain't so bright. Yancy, yeah, why you trying to apple polish me? Now come on, let's dance upstream a while, like the salmon. Who goes there? Pa? Oh, hi. Yeah, you all alone? Uh-huh. Oh. Guard duty, huh? Well, that's one way to put it. <laughs> Gosh, that music's pretty. It sure is, Pop. You ever dance with a plumber? Never. Girl, you ain't lived. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't you think it's time I did? And I'm warning you, I'm mighty nimble. Loose limb, too. I'd be honored to dance with you, Pop. <laughs> don't mind if I do. Now, according to most stories I've read, I should have dropped Yancey, found Whitney, sent the old plumber smiling on his way, and danced with her for the rest of the night. But that's not what happened at all. I didn't even see her, not for two days. And then, only out of my window, I saw her hurrying into the visitor's lounge to meet someone. And since I was in Chicago, well, I couldn't be this close and not pay you a visit. Ah, oh, it's been wonderful talking to you, Uncle Thatch. I must have left you in a terrible mess. Do you forgive me? Forget it. <laughs> I sent back all the wedding presents and soothed the ruffled bridegroom. Uh, but I'm still a little concerned about you. Me? Why? Well, to get in here, I had to see your commander, Stoughton. 
And she's afraid you're going sour all of a sudden. On myself, maybe, not on the waves. Couldn't be a man, could it? Not in this hen coop. Did you ever see a hen coop without a rooster? <laughs> Don't tell me you've met someone who is, uh, well, uh, shall we say indifferent? Shall we say? Well, much as it may be good for you, don't let him get away with it. Sounds fine, but what do I do? What's the matter with you? Where's your fight? My what? Fight. My fight? Uncle Thatch, I'll see you later. Now, wait a minute, Wendy. You come back here. Dr. Elcott, Seaman Recruit Young is here to see you, sir. Is she ill? No, sir. She says it's a personal problem, sir. And tell her the psychiatrist comes on duty at 1 o'clock tomorrow. Yes, sir. You could have seen her, you know. I'm just here killing time. I'm well, flattered, Commander Staunton. Now you know what I mean. Tell me, Doctor, how do you decide whose problems to be sympathetic to? When there's really a problem, I'm sympathetic. Do you know what she did before she joined up? Walked out on her own wedding. Left some poor oaf standing at the altar with egg on his face. Well, if he was an oaf... <laughs> Probably was a very wise move. Well, that means she's made 12 wise moves. That's how many times our seaman recruit Young has been engaged. Now, wouldn't you call that a little greedy? She didn't marry them. Naturally. The minute she's sure of something, she doesn't want it any longer. Now, you've seen a record. A whole history points that way. I'm more concerned with her record here, and it's pretty darn good. Oh, she's a bright girl. And a pretty one. She's beautiful. But boot camp lasts only nine weeks. I'd hate to depend on her for a long stretch. Well... <laughs> That one is trouble from nursery school right on up. Tell me, Doctor, do you do this much research on all our girls? Don't you think a good doctor should? I think it's splendid of you, poor fellow. Huh? What does that mean? It's an old proverb. Man who pauses to quarrel with rain for being wet gets wetter. The guy tells you to go to see a psychiatrist. Who told you that? Oh, well, I'm glad to see the grapevine hasn't withered yet. Oh, don't get mad. What we mean, well? Gee, that sounds awful, doesn't it? Well, what you don't know is that Stoughton was with him, and that's why he couldn't talk to you. Could you two stop being Mother's little helper? If you're going to the movies, why don't you go? We were waiting for you. Well, I'm not in the mood, I guess. Anyway, I need thinking time. Then we'll stay here and think with you. She wants to be alone. So come on, Mary Kay, let's shove off, huh? Quit, look. We're graduating in a week. You haven't much time left to do any thinking about it. Thank you, but this thought has occurred to me. Who goes there? Uh, oh, hello, Pop. Uh, uh, just passing by. Couldn't help but listen. Window open. Yeah, a real grim conversation. <laughs> All by yourself on a Saturday night, huh? Yep. Huh? Wasn't like that in my day. Kind of wish it was my day, too. <laughs> Thank you, Pop. Yeah, he's the one that needs a psychiatrist. Either that or the working end of a Stilson wrench. Mm. You mention that when you see him, will you? Mm. Now, uh, about that movie your friends went to. Yeah, it's a real good picture show. You ever went to a picture show with a plumber? No, but if you were to ask me, I... You joshing me, girl. I'd just love to go, Pop. <laughs> I'll be dog. It needs you out for ten minutes. Hello? Uh, this Doc Elcott? Yes? I'm calling for Admiral Stokes. He wants to see you right away. Admiral Stokes? Yes, sir. I'll be right over. Uh, hold on, man. Hold on there. Not in his office. Well, where, please? Uh, needs you real bad. He's over at the movie house, choking on a piece of popcorn. May I ask who this is? I'm the plumber. You mean they called you? Uh, steady, Doc. Steady, boy. Yes, of course. Thanks. I'll be right over. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just a real old devil. <laughs> Sergeant Gus Farr found a forlorn little waif sitting by the roadside in the rain in Korea. He gave the boy a nickname, Skippy, and he took him along as his mascot. Gus ordered books from home and began teaching English to the youngster. 
Later, when he was released from service, he took Skippy back to his home in West Virginia and formally adopted him. Well, Skippy went on to school, and Gus returned to service. Today, Skippy is much closer to his goal of becoming a doctor, thanks to Sergeant Gus Farr. Gus was killed in Korea, fighting to free the native country of his adopted son. But that son will not forget him, nor the ideals for which he died. Such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. We pause now for station identification. The curtain rises on Act Three of Skirts Ahoy, starring Esther Williams as Whitney Young and Barry Sullivan as Paul. Now, I know, of course, I know that this didn't make what you'd call complete sense, a plumber phoning about Admiral Stokes. But when the word Admiral is mentioned, it's considered a pretty good idea to play it safe. So I hurried over to the movies. There was Admiral Stokes, as normal as Admiral Stokes ever is. And enjoying the movies as, mu as much as Admiral Stokes ever enjoys anything. Well, I figured I might as well sit down and watch now that I was here. But just then, it was intermission, and walking down the aisle came seaman recruit Whitney Young and a funny old gentleman. Well, there he is. That's him, all right. <gasps> Admiral Stokes. No, no. A couple of sheets over. She? Oh, yes, Pop, I see. Well? Yeah? Go in there and sit down. Oh, no. Yep, you heard me, girl. Get in there and sit down. Well, wait a minute. Where are you going? Candy counter in the lobby. Get us a couple of abba -dabbas. Got a sweet tooth, you know. Uh, I, I beg your pardon. Please May I get two, please? I beg your pardon. Uh, uh, excuse me, Admiral, but w would you mind changing seats with me, sir? Why? Because I'd appreciate it very much. Uh, silliest thing I ever heard of. <sighs> You're a lamb. Thank you, sir. I am not a lamb. Hello, Dr. Elkis. Do you realize who you just changed seats with? You're the one who makes me do things like this. I'm just minding my own business and trying to keep out of your way. What happened to your uncle? He's not my uncle. And don't change the subject. Why are you trying to keep out of my way? That is the business I'm minding. Stop looking at me. No. That's the business I'm minding. Look, I'm sorry I took so much for granted the day after that night. Let's forget it. Fair enough. That makes us quits. No! Why don't you let the man alone? Thank you, sir. I like you. I'd like to see more of you. What's the matter with that? I've never liked anybody before. Eight polo players, one stockbroker, two band yeah, leaders. Yeah, just a minute. They like me. This is different. It certainly is. But why? I don't know what women are coming to. <laughs> Tell me why. Look, I just like to do my own hunting, that's all. But wouldn't the hunter be pleased if the rabbit walked right up to him and said, Here I am? Shows you don't know anything about hunting. Half of the fun is staking out something for yourself. Look, up till now, I've led a reasonably pleasant life. The pleasantest part has been choosing the women I want and chasing them. I like it that way. I'm going to keep it that way. Can't you get that through your silly, spoiled head? I'm sorry to have caused you so much annoyance, Doctor. Excuse me, Alex. I don't know what men are coming to either. Have you ever dug a hole and found yourself at the bottom of it? Now, what's that supposed to mean? Sorry, sir. Just talking to myself. Well, thanks for trying, Pop. Oh, we sure made the effort, didn't we? Yeah. Once in a while, no matter what. Yeah, just some things are sort of lick you. Mm. How's a person going to know when to give up? I can't kid yourself. Comes a moment when you know. Clears a bell, you can hear it. And you know it's time to give up. Maybe you're right. Well, thanks again for walking me back. Been a failure to you tonight. Just a failure. Well, you're the nicest one I've ever known, Pop. Good night. Well, about a week later, they held graduation exercises at the base. The seamen recruits were recruits no longer. They were in. And the big thing in their lives right now were their orders. Where they would go for 
up my orders. Three months training in Washington, and they'll consider the overseas request. Just what we hope for, the three of us. Yeah, us and Archie in Paris, France. Well, come on, kids, back to the barracks. Hey, wait a minute, look, sailors. This is a rarity? <laughs> I mean, new sailors. A whole new batch. Oh, gee, look at a march. The Ives, oh! Nancy! You can't look in with them sailors. Oh, that's Archie, my Archie! Baby! Oh, Archie! <laughs> what are you doing here? Well, what are you doing here? On account of you, I got my orders changed. I'm staying here for two years. I've been seeing you, baby. Oh, Archie, oh, no! Oh, he's arriving and I'm leaving. Every time it happens, every time. What about me? I sign up for overseas just when I think the dick is... Well, maybe he's not so bad after all. Why don't you two stop complaining and concentrate on Washington and Paris like I'm doing? Without Archie? Without Dick? It's different with you. Yeah, you can't miss what you haven't got, you know. How true. Oh, gee, well, I'm sorry. I, I, oh, I didn't... forget it, forget it. Come on. We've got to start packing. <laughs> We're all finished. I wonder who's going to be living here next. Who says we're all finished? You know it's awful when nothing comes of something. Look, I'm trying to forget him. That's what you told me to do, wasn't it? Forget him? Well, I don't know, Whit. Maybe you should sort of, well, sort of finish it. It is finished. Yeah, but it, it, it's finished without really being final. You're absolutely right. But what would make it final? Well, like if Whit, well, if Whit marched right slide up to his office. And he opened the door, and they looked at each other for a minute, and she socked him right in the button. <laughs> Boy, that didn't make it final. Well, I'm not so sure. You see, there's a right kind of final and a wrong kind of final. For example, if he came to the window right now and tapped on it, and she leaned out and he told her how wonderful she was and how sorry he was he'd been such a boo, but... No. No, it couldn't be. So how do you know it couldn't be? Well, go on, Whit. Go on, get over to the window. Now, look, if this is something you two characters have dreamed up, I... Who goes there? Ha. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just some flowers for you. I picked them out of the Admiral's backyard. Oh. <laughs> well, you couldn't have done anything nicer. I, I come to say goodbye because you're the only one that ever was here that I was sorry to say goodbye to. Fact is, you're the only one I ever did say goodbye to. Thank you, Pop. I'll never forget. <laughs> Me neither. You sure is slick dancer, Miss. Good luck. Well, everybody got everything? There's nothing more to do here. Except one thing. Make it final. I'll meet you two at transportation. <laughs> Come in. Oh. Seaman Young to see Dr. Elkett. An impersonal problem. Relax. I, um, I hear you're going overseas. Eventually, I suppose. Meanwhile, I came to apologize. You what? I've been a nuisance, and I'm sorry. You see, I, I thought all you had to do was ask for something, and you'd get it. It's always worked before, and of I course... wish the whole thing had happened differently. Oh, well, I wouldn't have acted any differently. I thought for a while I could change, that I could try being coy and run, and maybe you'd chase me, but... Oh, I'm really hopeless. Completely unteachable, because if I could get you that way, I, I wouldn't want you. Now, now, wait. Wait a moment. I'm not through, sir. You see, I'm not apologizing for the way I acted. That it bothered you. That's what I'm sorry about. Oh. I, I still believe in asking for what I want. All I've learned is not to count on getting it. Well, I... But that's a lot to learn, isn't it, Doctor? It makes things... Well, it makes things more interesting, if not much fun. All finished? Mm, yes. Thanks, and goodbye. I have to catch a train. Now, just a minute. Whitney, wait! She said it all, and she has to catch a train. <laughs> Track three, Doc. That's 11.44. Thanks. <laughs> And you'll write to me every day, huh, Mary Kate? Once a week. Then. Every day. I want to know everything that happens. And I want you to be real careful. Don't talk to just anyone now. Not even women and children? <laughs> oh, gee, baby, you know what it's like. Yeah. Ships that pass in the night. How'd you know I was going to say that? 
Hey, look, there are anybody around here I ought to know. You know, any, uh, any lookers? Huh? Oh, sure, sure. I'll give you a whole list. As a matter of fact, I may do a little looking myself. Baby, no. No, you wouldn't do that to me. I trust you. What else can you do? <laughs> You'll get two weeks leave after your Washington training. I'll get off somehow. Mm, and you put in a request for a transfer? I've already done that as soon as I heard about you. Oh. I'll call you every night in Washington. I'll never go out. <laughs> You fell in love with me the minute you saw me, didn't you? I fell in love with you exactly 20 minutes ago. Yes, darling. Oh, I don't know when I fell in love with you. All I know is I've been feeling terrible. Me too. Yeah. Feel better now? Mm. <laughs> well, the rest is sort of, well, you know, sort of personal stuff. Sometimes I try to figure out who got what. Did the hunter get the rabbit or did the rabbit get the hunter? But this much I can tell you. I had the hunting license from the day I met her. In a moment, our stars will return. When the 84th Engineering Corps was stationed south of Seoul in Korea, a young North Korean was employed in the kitchen. He was most appreciative of the work cleaning vegetables, washing dishes, scrubbing the floor, for which he was paid about $15 a month. One morning, when he reported for work, he brought the news that a new baby had arrived during the night. Happy and proud as he was over the event, he confided in embarrassment that he and his wife had not been able to provide clothing for the child because there was nothing to buy in the stricken city. The young mess sergeant under whom he served wrote to his wife about all this, and she promptly bought an entire layette and sent it to her husband to give to the Korean parents. The Korean father, when handed the package, couldn't control his emotion and wept tears of joy that, from so far away, such wonderful gifts should come to his small son. Such acts as these by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. Now, Mr. Cummings with our stars. And we'd like to thank them for a very entertaining evening. Esther Williams and Barry Sullivan. <laughs> Next week, we will bring together as a romantic team for the first time two of the most exciting stars in Hollywood. A delightful actress who has won more popularity polls than I could care to count. Lovely June Allison. And as a co-star, that dynamic personality... Jeff Chandler. And we have chosen a story for them from Universal International Studios, one that has all the ingredients for great drama because of you. Well, that ought to be quite a show, Irving. We'll be listening. Good night. Good night. Good night and good sailing. Where Virginia Gregg as Lieutenant Commander Stoughton, Gigi Pearson as Yancey, Barbara Fuller as Mary, and Earl Lee as the plumber. Theater is produced by Mr. Irving Cummings. Our orchestra is under the direction of Rudy Schrager. This is Ken Carpenter inviting you to join us next week at this same time for another presentation of the Hollywood Radio Theater. Hollywood Radio Theater is a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. 